Late on Sunday evening, the news came through that the awfully senior football manager, Liam Kearns, had died suddenly. It was profoundly shocking. On behalf of the Irish Examiner, I would like to express our deep sympathies to his wife, Angela, to his daughters, Rachel and Laura, on their heartbreaking loss and to all his family and all his friends. No words are adequate in this moment. We would like to acknowledge Liam's enormous contribution to Gaelic football over his life. My name is Paul Rouse, and this is a short tribute to Liam Kearns from the Irish Examiner Football Podcast. I only got to know Liam since the beginning of last autumn when trying to get him to take over the Offaly senior football team. So I didn't know him well at all, regrettably, but two things stood out immediately. How much he loved football and how brilliant he was with people and especially with players. Later, we'll be talking to players from his brilliant Limerick and Tipperary teams and to Michael Dignan from the Offaly County Board. But before he became an outstanding manager, Liam was a footballer of considerable distinction. And I'm joined by his great friend and sparring partner, John Evans, to discuss this. Liam was a great footballer, John. Uh, yes, Paul, he was a smashing footballer and midfielder, you know, and uh, he was a big man, about 6'2", I suppose, and a uh, great pair of hands and a good left leg in him, you know, and uh, he played for the renowned Stax Club, and I suppose he came after the five or six or seven, six all-stars that Stax had, and he was carrying the can there around the, the, the middle of the, of the field um, for Stax, and uh, he did it very aggressively, and he did it with full of pride in his club, and he carried the, the black and amber of the stacks with great, with great pride, really, Paul. And uh, he was he was colossal at midfield. And I remember the battles he had with Lone Rangers. We were in a um, county semi final in '89. They had he had won a county championship with the stacks, I think, in 1986. And at that time, they were they were they were still a big big danger. And uh, he was the leader of the pack from the middle. And uh, when they were when they were slacking off, Liam was there to, you know, he, he was a real midfielder that could plow through backs and release a ball at the right time. So, um, you know, he he was much admired. And he was on the Kerry panel. He was a Kerry minor back with uh, I remember well with Joe Shannon. Um, I suppose back around two thousand. Uh, no, it was earlier. I suppose say about nineteen eighty something. I don't know what the date was now. But sorry, Paul. It was the early eighties. Yeah, in the early eighties. The early eighties. Yeah, and uh, he was in the county minor team for two years uh, in a row and won a, an All Ireland minor, and then he went on to win uh, to play under twenty one. And uh, I suppose that gave him the grounding. Well, he went on to be a, on the Kerry senior panel then from there on in the league and that, but um. That gave him the foundation of what was to become, a, a, what he was to become as a a, a great um, a great manager, and he moved on then to to Limerick to club football first, and then into Limerick where he showed his prowess. Yeah, his his move into 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 club football. Did he immediately when he was playing, and then he was starting off? Did he demonstrate? Did you get the sense that he was going to be a manager? No, not really. Only I I knew he was a leader. You could see that he 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 leadership qualities in him, and uh, there was there was something about his gait, you know, the way he stood. He carried himself very very well, uh, very authoritative. And I suppose, you know, whether he uh, whether he gleaned that from the fact that he was role at midfield for the the, the fame club Staxer, whether he got it when he joined the Gardaí, he became a sergeant uh, in the in the in the Garda Shikana. Um, but he carried himself well, and that's the one thing you noticed about Liam, that he presented himself, carried himself, and he had great power of, uh, of dictionary. You know, he, 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 he expressed himself very well. And you, you got to know him very well then on a personal level over the years. Yeah, he was. He had been with Limerick, I suppose. I wouldn't have known him that well from being with Limerick, other than his his absolutely um, uh, flying uh, what you call it, flying the Limerick colours with the under twenty ones. Firstly, he won two Munster titles, I think, at, uh, back there around two thousand, early two thousands, I'd say. 
2002 or three, uh, three and his name began to pop up an awful lot. And then, of course, when he took over the senior team, uh, and they got to, to a monster final and a replay against Kerry, because then people began to look at Liam Cairns and say, what the hell is he doing? He's, he's really produced a tough team, tough Limerick team that pushed Kerry all the way each time. And, and I mean, they met over two years and maybe people thought that it was, it was, it was he possibly didn't, um, how would I say, I'm trying to word it right now. The fact that he had such a good competitive team and they were from a low base of Division 4 and 3, he brought them up to Division 2. And by God, could they were they a tough, teak, tough team? And he instilled those qualities in them, Paul. And it was um, when they played against Kerry. Let me tell you, you wouldn't know that when the when the tough got going, the going got tough, and they were right, really tough games. Some people in Kerry would say that they were over the top a small bit. I didn't think so. I thought it was look, yeah, I didn't think so either. I have to say, I didn't think so either. No, 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 no. But um. He he carried those ingredients right through his managerial career, and then he went with Leash and uh, got them to a Leinster final. And for some strange reason, there was a departure of the ways there. I don't know what happened there. So he had he had three or four years then where he was he was involved with club, and uh, I was happened to be in um, Roscommon, and I was looking for a coach in my uh, a coach to join me and. Um, uh, Liam contacted me and said that he would be interested. And uh, so we would meet every day, Paul, on the way up to Roscommon. I'd pick him up in Burnt Hill and by God, was it football, football, football the whole way. And uh, obviously I had got uh, Roscommon up from Division 3 to 2. And Liam was with me when we went from 2 to 1. And uh, God, we had great times. Great, he, he had a great way about him and... Uh, I suppose what I liked about him more what, most was that the research he did, he did uh, a huge yeah, amount of... He was meticulous, of, wasn't he, really? He was meticulous. Absolutely in... meticulous. Yeah. You know, if he was going after an opposition, whether they were the next door neighbour or they were 200 miles away, he had a knack of getting information on each player and dissecting them, you know. Um, at the time, he when he came with me, he, was, he had been out of the game what, three or four years and he wanted to bring himself up to pace with the uh, with stats and with the scientific side of things as well and uh, because things move on fairly rapidly at inter-county level and uh, he adapted very very easily he was very open-minded and very good with players so when he when we finished there in Roscommon I he, the, the the Tipperary job came up of course and God, I, I was I was emphasizing to Liam, let's go after you should go after that. There's a young team there. I had been there. They had won All Ireland Minor. They had won the All Ireland Minor. They had been in an All Ireland under twenty one. We had won Munster uh, under twenty one, and uh, it was a great opportunity. And uh, then I I remember ringing ringing um, the the authorities that be in in Tipperary and saying, hey. This is a first-class guy that will do the job here in Tipperary. And, uh, of course, I knew the players intimately and uh, having spent five years there. And I thought he was just manna from heaven. He was the right man in the right place. And by God, Paul, did he do a good job on them. Brilliant. I mean, Absolutely in, in, first in class. Recent, in recent months and in in over the last couple of years, you'd be, you, you and Liam would have been in contact very regularly. We would, yeah, and actually, only last Friday he discussed the 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 the, the what do you call it. He spoke, but I spoke to him about um, the Longford uh, win and uh, the pathway that he saw with Offaly. But the interesting thing that was quite that came up was that I said your next step is going to be a bit tricky. You're playing Tipperary next week, and. Uh, yeah, he says that's kind of going to be it was going to be interesting, but on the Offaly job that he got, he was looking at the Offaly job as being his 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 last job that he was going to take, and he wanted to be he wanted to make it so good. And uh, look, look, I'll tell you all fine and straight. He, he he was so impressed with Michael Dignan, and he was that the way Michael Dignan backed him and 
big decisions that he wanted to do this, that, and the other. He wanted to. He wanted to make this. He had great, great hopes, and he had. He had. Um, he actually had a pathway. I won't go into it now, but he had a pathway made out for 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 Offaly and what he was doing, and uh, very level-headed. But again, the players look. I don't have to say it to you or anybody else, but the players in Offaly just absolutely took him like duck to water. They he he pressed all the right buttons. They were responding well to him as they did in Tipperary, as they did in Limerick, as they did in Leith. And look, that was part of his character. He was just fabulous with with, uh, with players, knew to put, when to put the hand around a guy and knew when to give a guy a kick in the backside and get him rolling, like, you know. On a personal basis, I can honestly, I he'll be sadly, sadly missed with his information, his contacts, his phone calls, Oh, he was just a uh, just a guy that ha- that was so full of life and a great friend to have had. I- I'm so sorry to have lost him. And to Angela, and his two girls, Laura and Rachel, and of course Ollie would have been a very good friend of mine as well. His father, and uh, uh, what you call it, we would meet an awful lot on the golf course. And uh, again, not stretching it. This is how close I was with them, I suppose. Peter, his his brother, died very, very young, um, leaving a young family after him. And this is so hard on Ali to lose his second son. My God, what do you do? What do you say? So, look, that's all I can say about, about Liam. And, uh, you know, may he rest in peace. May he rest in peace, indeed. I'm joined now by Stephen Lucy, who played for Liam as a Limerick under 21 and then as a, a Limerick senior. Stephen, when did you first meet Liam Kearns? Uh, firstly, Paul, I want to give my sincere sympathies to Angela and uh, Laura and Rachel. Um, it's shocking. It's devastating. We were all in, in bits last night and on our WhatsApp groups just uh, reminiscing about it and talking about it. So uh, condolences to, to the family. Like It's, it's an awful loss. Um, first time meeting Liam was uh, back around spring in uh, 2000. So he was after taking over the Limerick team and uh, I was above in Dublin and UCD and playing matches and training like 25 times a week. And uh, we were in the under-21 championship. So as you know, spring is a tight squeeze with the Fitzgibbon, Sigerson, under-21 hurling, under-21 football and the seniors and everything going on. And so I didn't get to be with the 21s as much as I would have liked but um, it was only like within a month or something of the championship starting that I kind of was with the squad and down. And he picked me up off the train, basically, at the train station in Cork. And uh, I think I, I don't think it was the night of the match. It must have been something else. We beat Cork down in Parky Cueve in the under-21. And that was my first time meeting him. And uh, sure, we kicked off a great relationship uh, ever since the minute we met. Uh, what is it that uh, uh, that drew you to Liam? Oh, his character, his personality. It was uh, whatever about... Like there's so many strands of it, you know, his um his man management, you know, he was a leader. He had charisma. Not everyone has charisma, and he had it in spades. We followed him, we would have followed him into battle, we'd have followed him into war, you know, people like that. Um then like you know, he made us believe. Um he made us not give a shit who we were playing. Uh, you know, we were quite happy to punch above our weight, we always did. Um, kick down any barriers that were in front of us, just be defiant. I'd say defiance was one of the main words I would use. Um, you know, we, that was a big game that time, uh, beating Cork in the under 21s. We wouldn't have been expected to win anything in football ever. And uh, we got to the All Ireland final that year and we got to the Munster final the following year. And uh, with the seniors, then we went on and we competed with Cork and with Kerry fairly, fairly well in those years. You know, we came very close to winning a Munster, but it wasn't to be. But getting back with Liam. He had that ability, and not every manager or coach has, to be your friend, to have mighty crack all together like he's one of the lads. And then the very next day or the next night, he cracked the whip and you'd shut your mouth and you'd get, get on with it. Or he could, you know, if you out of it and there'd be no hard feelings and you'd take it and he'd get on with it and there'd be nothing said about it then after that. You know, so he had that ability to be able to do those two things. Yeah, he was able to, it would seem, to mix with you guys as players. But at the same time, there was a line. Oh, there was, yeah. There was. That's that's what he had. He had that ability. 
not everyone is able to do that. Like I'm still playing. Like, and if I was coaching, uh, if I was to go coach in the group, I, I would struggle to, you know, be their friend or have the crack, uh, or you know, not have any awkward, difficult conversations. I'd struggle with that myself. But no bother with him. Like, and you know, he was very mature and straight, and treated us maturely as well. And we, pre- I guess, we all appreciated that. I'd be pretty sure he was the same with any any team or squad he's ever been with across all the different counties or clubs. Yeah, it's really interesting talking to people over today about that idea that that he was direct and that he was straight. But some people can be direct and straight, and you cannot identify with them, or you you end up they end up annoying you to the point where you turn the other way, turn away from them. Yeah. People he was direct with and straight, but seemed to have turned towards him. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, he had that like he had that likability, and um, you know he had that personality and charisma. You see, that's just part of who he was. You know, like Liam. I so I read something today. He could just as easily be out a night out with him and end up on your couch as your manager, and uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the next week, the next two nights later, he's back being the manager again, and you're one of the players. You know, um, and 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 he did go on a night out. Now you sent me some photographs. Oh yeah. From earlier today, from from your times as players and 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 all of that, and what really strikes me in the photos is how young he looked when he was. Oh my god! Guys. I only realised it last night when he came in, and I was like, "God, what age is Liam?" Never, you never think of these things. And then, yeah, he was sixty. I was like, "Oh my god, what age was he when he was managing us?" He was younger than I am today. Like, and I'm fierce young at heart. Like, you know, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it only it, the time frame. I didn't realise, like, you know, he was always the adult, and we were always the young people, you know. But really. You know, he was young at heart as well. But the photo I sent you after that match, the Munster final against in 2004, he just looks like a young fella. And, you know, he was like, he was in his, what was he, 44 then? 45 maybe? Something like yeah. that. And you know? he joined, he joined your kind of those older lads, those established players in Limerick with your younger players, your younger yeah. people when he built that. Yeah. Limerick. How, did he, how did he do that? Oh, that was there. You know, we were like best friends. We still are. We still are. Murish Gavin, John Kwan, you know, all the older guys. Uh, yeah, me, Hall, yeah. Really. yeah, and then the younger guys, with who's like myself, Stephen Lavin, Mark O'Reard, and John Galvin. And there was then uh, lots in in between. Well, able to mix and gel us all together. Like it was like a club team. It was, and we're still very close friends. All of us. Like any time, any of us meet anywhere at any match, or even in WhatsApp. So if anyone gets on to me for X, Y, or Z or I have to ask somebody. It's like we're transported back to that time. It's like no time has passed. You're still best friends. You still talk about the same things. The memories and the experiences that you share as a group really bonds a group. Anyone with any squad uh, that has been there will will be able to tell you about those things that now, looking back years later, they're the things that you talk about and you remember. You mentioned that Liam could sing as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh Jesus, he's so my life and soul of the party. Johnny Jump Up was his uh, was his party piece, and uh, I saw Shane Dowling put had one up uh, yesterday um, of Liam singing a song. I don't know, was it that one or was it something else? Back in 2017, it must have been when they won their their Munster or their All Ireland. Like, but Liam Napierce was one of the first clubs after uh, John Broadford that he got involved with in Limerick. Like, so he'd be, you know, he'd have a good, con- a, a very good connection with, uh, with, uh, Napier Sheik. So it was funny seeing him. I was like, that's, that's Liam. Like, that's typical Liam, like having a point holding court, you know, chatting away to everybody, you know, a great and, character. Like Jesus, he'll be sorely missed now, really. And, and a really big figure around Limerick as well from, I mean, he is, he's a national figure. I, it's extraordinary how many people across the GA. Oh, big time. So across the GA, Across the guard, uh, the guardy, um, he was involved in Satanta College. He uh, like uh, he was involved in so many different things. Like I was one of the judges for say Limerick Sports Star of the Month with, with the Limerick Leader and the Radisson Hotel in Limerick, and he was one of the judges there. And in actual fact, my last time meeting him was maybe two six weeks ago. We were at a, an event, uh, um, a kind of a Q and A with some of the Munster players, or Paul O'Connell and them in in um, in the Radisson. And I was sitting with Liam and his friend John Ryan who was on the backroom team um, when he was with us. And Liam now is the Limerick Under-17 manager. And we were chatting about how we hadn't gotten to go out and had drinks and, you know, had a reminisce, as we call it, in in ages, certainly since before the pandemic. And we says, oh, yeah, 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 we must do that. Like, it'd be great. We'll all get the lads together. We're all in the WhatsApp group. And sure now, we'll never get to do it, you know? You know, I was, I was sitting on the couch last night. This is a bit out there now, but I was sitting on the couch and just thinking about... Um, you know, your own mortality and that, like, and how 
you know, that with the pandemic as well, did the same thing. It makes you think about making the most of your life. You've only one shot at it. And uh, saying we'd go for drinks with Liam and we never did. And now we'll never get to do it, you know. Um, you know, and uh, my own son, uh, we were our first kid there about four months ago. And uh, as, as one of the lads said to me, you'll hug them a bit tighter tonight, won't you? I says, you sure will. Like, it just makes you think about all these things. When my father died two years ago, you start thinking about these things as you get older. Young lads are bulletproof. You know, they don't be thinking about this crack at all. But as we get older and people start passing away, you start, you know, thinking about these kind of things. Like, it's a bit morbid and a bit out there, but it's where my head was at last night. And uh, we were all on WhatsApp, like, you know. I think I think it's one of those things that were shared because I know from talking to people in Offaly who have been training with Liam on Sunday morning and he was full of life, full of beans in, in absolutely fantastic form. And even better yeah. in time, just a deep sense of shock from that. Yeah, oh, it's terrible. Like I, I saw one of the photos, I don't know which paper it was on today, but a photo of Liam in, in the Offaly uh, Bonish door bib and he had lost a ton of weight and he looked fitter than, than I'd seen him, I'd say, ever, actually. And um, so then when it happened, I was like, Jesus, I can't believe this is after happening. But like, look what happened to poor Tom Tierney, like, you know, and look what happened to Anthony Foley. Like, we never know what's going to happen to us. Like, you know, it's a dreadful shock. Like, you know, he was a great character. And as you said, he touched so many people across so many counties. Like, he'd be friendly with a lot of the rugby crowd, the GA crowd, you name it, any crowd at all, like GA clubs all over the place. Supporters, you know, from, from being the county manager, supporters from all over the county, they know he was a nice guy. They knew from talking to everyone that he, everyone got on with him. And then he, they, if they did meet him, he would be friendly and he'd have a, you know, a good friendly chat with them as well. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's shocking. Absolutely shocking. Thank you very much, Stephen. I'm joined now by Brian Fox, the Tipperary footballer who played so many matches under Liam and with such success during those years. Brian, if I could ask you straight up, what impression did Liam Kearns make on you when he came into Tipperary? Yeah, but um, I suppose the first impression I suppose I got off Liam was, I suppose he was just a very, very confident person, very outspoken fella. You know, he, he wanted to explain himself. He didn't mind if he treaded on toes or whatever like that. He just... He spoke his mind, you know, he was very honest with fellas and stuff like that. And, you know, I think fellas appreciated that when, you know, you're in a county setup, you want to hear positive stuff, but you also need to be able to receive feedback. So from that point of view, he made a big impression on all of us. Like, you know, he drove us to a higher standard than what we'd ever been up to that point. And that higher standard brought you to the right to the edge of Division 1 football with Tipperary, which would have been the first time for that to happen, and to an All-Ireland semi-final, which was very winnable on the day that was in it. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there are brilliant memories I have, I suppose, of those of those times. Like, you know, 2016 was a magical year for us, getting to our first Munster final um, as a team, beating Cork for the first time in 70-odd years, beating Galway, beating Derry, and getting to play in Crow Park against Mayo. And then um, 2018, we got to... We were in Division 2 and it was our first year in Division 2 and we came within a kick of a ball to beat in a cabin to get promoted. Like, and, you know, it was just... You lost by one point, is that right? You lost by one point? In yeah, we lost by one point. I, I mean, I could tell you that game now, is, it's still six, six, six in the crown now, I'll be honest. Um, we, Liam Case, I think, got sent off early in the second half for a very harmless challenge now, just kind of was frontal, got sent off and um, we, we had a few opportunities, like, I mean, guilty edge opportunities to get ahead and we were level at home down the track and Jesus, they got a point. I fairly sure it was McKernan got the point and it was a brilliant point and it was the winner of the game for them. But like we had given it Everton and we believed like we were going up to Division One, I suppose. That's kind of the belief he instilled in us, you know, um, that we were going to do that. And is that was that Liam's greatest strength, the connection he made with players and 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 the manner in which he 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 instilled belief through making connections. Yeah, um, it's it's funny. Like when he started off with us in 2016, um, we we actually he didn't have the great the greatest start with us. Like you know, we actually struggled in Division Three the first year in 2016, and we barely got out of relegation. We bet or we drew with Sligo, and kind of after that league, we kind of had a kind of like a little bit of feedback, a bit of uh, you know. A meeting just amongst players and imagine say look what went well what we didn't and I suppose we probably weren't happy with some of the stuff he was he was doing at the time and he probably wasn't happy with the effort we were given at the time 
And so it kind of made us closer, the fact that we were able to have a go at each other about it, what we wanted as a group and what he wanted as a group. And, you know, then I think he realized that he needed to change his approach to us and how we operate because he had had success with Aherlow and he had been involved with Limerick and got him to a month's final. And he realized we, we were just a different group of people that needed a different way. Like, and in fairness to him, like, he changed his tact and how he approached things. He listened to us a lot more. And then from that, our confidence grew. And I just remember he said that in 2016, he's, our, the, the, the layout of the championship was we were playing Waterford in the quarterfinal with Cork in semifinal if we bet Waterford. And he just said, we'll get over Waterford. And he goes, I guarantee you we'll beat Cork. And we didn't play amazing against Waterford. We were actually looking to get out, out of Fraher Field with a win. But the minute we won it, we all believed that we were going to beat Cork. And we did like and to but but it wasn't sometimes managers can come in and have a decent season or you can get a result that kind of almost puts you to a place where you think oh we, we did really well there but obviously he had more than that because to get up almost to get up to division one is it was a fair achievement oh yeah you like i suppose that year 2016 i suppose it, it acted as a building block you know and but when you had, like I suppose, like I said, you had a few fellas who didn't commit to 2016 and then they wanted to commit to 2017, like, you know, and that belief, he, he I don't know how he instilled that belief, I suppose, like I said, that team bond that he created was huge, like, you know, and fellas did were very tight and I suppose it was the first time where as a group, after the big victories, we did go out and we did celebrate, you know, and even I remember after losing to Mayo, like, we still went out and we had a great time, like, you know, that's the yeah. truth, but like, you know, and that was part of it. And then, the following year we just kicked on we like we wanted more of this like you know and that's what he gave to us and like we got promotion 2017 uh played to loud division and, to division two you went to yeah division two. Division two, so bet armay open armay on the last day with a last minute goal again like just mikey quilliman but i suppose had the confidence to go do it uh bet armay to get promoted uh then played loud we bet loud in the division three final so there was a cup and we were on a bit of a crest of a wave you know, again, and it was all about having the crack on the night out, enjoying ourselves. Like, I mean, the, the plan would always be organize your hotel room or organize this early in the week. We all knew what the plan was on, you know, on the Tuesday night before the match. Hey, look, we're going here. We're doing this. That's all part now. It's time to focus on the game. Like, you know, and like fellas needed that too. Like fellas needed to realize that there's a balance, you know, between playing and obviously competing at the high, highest level, but also just getting to know each other on a better level. Like, you know. Uh, on a social side, from talking to 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 lads in Offaly and from from who who play with them, and then to you know some of the 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 tip lads and Limerick lads, everybody has spoken about how much how many hours he put into preparing and how hard he worked at it, but also that sense that this was also to be fun, and there had to be devilment and there had to be a, there had to be joy in it as well, and there had to be going out. Yeah, oh geez, yeah. I, I tell you, all right, well, now, um, I think it was, and I, I can't remember now which was well, because we played a lot of matches up in Dublin over that two or three years in 16 and 17 and so on. But one of the matches, anyway, we played and we were out in Dublin. I say we we're in Rhines and we all said, look, we'll go to Coppers, that's grand. And sure, we were queuing in Coppers like any person, like we wouldn't be like the dubs there getting free entry, like, you know, we were just about to pay. <laughs> And Kearns walks up behind us and goes, do mind that, lads? Just walk in here now. And he goes, to the, they seem to turn to the bouncer. They're all with me. And strolled on. Strolled <laughs> on. And, then, and then he goes, how how, how will you remember Liam Kearns, Brian? Just, I suppose, as a very genuine football man, like who really wanted the best for every team he was involved with, you know. And um, like I said, a, a straight talker, a fella, you know, who, who didn't mind telling you the way it was like whether it hurt your feelings or not just because it was for your own betterment like you know and every group he wanted to be with he wanted to make them better um yeah so look i remember for a lot of reasons i suppose the crack and the social side too like it's it's huge like you know and you'll, you'll always remember those special moments but yeah just a real genuine down to earth football man i'm joined now by the chairperson of offley ga michael dignan michael you got to know uh, Liam over the last six months or so when he came in to manage Offaly I did Paul I suppose I, I would have known um, would have known Liam from a distance if he, I, I would have spoken to him up and down and said hello but I didn't really know him uh, as a person um, would have admired 
the great work he'd done in football circles uh, with Tipperary and Limerick and, and Leash. But, um, and um, met him in the Faithful Fields, I think, around the end of July last year and just Im- immediately hugely impressed with him. Um, his knowledge of the game, um, his straight talking, his inherent decency, uh, his honesty, you could see it straight away. And um, I would have decided there and then, there was a, a group of us that you were involved with yourself and Stephen Darby and Colin Cummins and Derville Dolan uh, on the subcommittee. But um, I think we all would have agreed that he was the man for the job uh, straight away once we met him. It was interesting, wasn't it? He he wasn't on an initial list of of people who were in the frame or who you might have thought of. But the minute he came on the radar, there was only going to be one choice. Yeah, and that that's very true. Um, I suppose look, we 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 John John Mohan had moved on. Tomas O'Shea had been up with us, obviously as coach, and uh, Declan Kelly, the twenty football manager, all Ireland winner, wasn't available um, due to work commitments. And we'd spoken to Declan. Tomas decided that he couldn't give the time um, with the travel and everything else, and he went to Kerry under twenty. So we were there then. We were chatting ourselves, Paul, as you know, and um, it was just. It, it was just unbelievable. They like the penny. People said talk about the penny dropping, but when it dropped, and you look at the CV, you look at the type of person he was, um, you look at the ambition that he had, which is a huge thing with me. Um, you know, from day one, um, and he was, he, as he says himself, he was retired from from the guards. He'd been a sergeant in the guards for many years. He had gone back to college. Um, he had educated himself and strength and condition. His football. Uh, no, his football knowledge is second to none. He seems to know every single manager of every team in Ireland, uh, county, club, colleges, everybody, and knows all the players. And like, I love that because I, I'd be the same at Hurling. You know, I, I have such a, an interest and love of it. And you could see that with Liam. And um, and then, you know, the way he went about building his backroom team, uh, you know, your brother John is in there, great football man, Martin Murphy, who had great success, uh, but two huge Offaly men. And Liam was very, very strong on that, that he wanted two really capable Offaly men by his side. And, and and he certainly got that. And then he built his team from there. And, you know, and a tough time to come into Offaly, Paul, with, you know, our under-20 team who were, who were marvellous. So many bad injuries on that team. Um, number of other lads travelling this year, a couple of lads away with work commitments. The great Niall McNamee, Johnny Maloney, who've given great service, not available. Uh, so it was nine or ten lads that you could say would probably start for Offaly. That weren't even in the dressing room and to do the job that he has done uh since i think it hasn't got the recognition i think that job in rebuilding the panel and being secure in division three I, it's kind of gone beneath the radar because it is an outstanding achievement over the last number of months yeah and i suppose something you couldn't talk about because you didn't want to be defeatist you know i couldn't say it but i would have been you know looking at this i would have been sort of saying this is going to be a really really difficult year for us and he was talking like that. And then we sort of had a chat one day and both of us agreed, move on, shut the, up. Yeah. We have to get on. We have to get on with it. This is who we, these are the players, totally committed bunch, as you know, unbelievably committed. We're missing who we're missing. This is our panel now. We have to stop talking about the guys who aren't here because that's going to affect the confidence of the guys who are here. And we have to yeah. trust these players and move on. And they, and they did. And he meticulously targeted the first two games of the league he told me to win the first two games. He said, we're going to struggle a bit against Westmead and Cavan, but we'll beat Longford and obviously the tip match is coming up and we'll be safe. And he said, it'll take us a year or two, but we'll be a very strong Division 2 side in a couple of years' time. He had a plan down to a T. He had the players in mind that would come back in next year. He had the players that would be coming the year after. Um, and it's just, look, Paul, it's just it's just so devastating um, for Offaly football. Obviously, it completely pales into insignificance uh, compared to his family. Uh, I wasn't talking to Angela. I was talking to Laura, his daughter, just there a few minutes ago. I was talking to her last night on a couple of occasions, and 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 Rachel, his other daughter, and his mum and dad are still alive. Like it's it's and his brothers and sisters. It's a huge, huge loss for all of them. It's a massive loss for us, our players and management. I'm talking to the lads, to Decky Hogan and Anton last night, and Decky again this morning, and talking to your brother John and Mark Murphy and Alan Flynn. Like the, just everybody is just in shock and and so upset. I think the stri- the thing that struck me most was the connections that he immediately made and then built on in the county. So he was well got with the rest of the management, obviously. He's well got with you. But in the dressing room, he is he 
his rapport with the players from very early on is, was good, but it was only getting stronger. And you can't really fool a dressing room. And he just he just managed to have something about him with with, with players. He had a huge aura. I don't go into the dressing rooms very often because I don't think it's my place. Um, I'd be around all right, you know, at the matches near, near the team, near the management, um, in the background. Um, but I did go in after the um, after the Fermanagh game, after the Fermanagh game, yeah, and it was just unbelievable. He was sitting in the middle of the dressing room and. He had left off a couple of lads that weren't too happy and Panda had come on, Panda Allen scored five points and Keen Farrell had come on and scored a point. So he had a great laugh about that. He he, he said the, the boys, he, he, they were complaining to him and he said, go and prove me wrong and show it up in me and do it. And he acknowledged that they had done it and it was just brilliant, brilliant fun, but brilliant to acknowledge the boys as well and the contribution they had made and still to tell them there was no guarantee to be getting the game the next day you know as well <laughs> so, but he, yeah, had, he, um, had, he took away yeah. he had huge he, he, he had huge um he had huge presence like a big man but he knew what he was talking about and you say paul you can't fool the dressing room straight away and, and i would say the players were a little bit maybe at the start a little bit a little bit unsure because you know he's very direct and maybe a little bit you know maybe some of them might be able for that you know at, at times you know and he he uh i know he said the modern player but you know it's a different dressing a different culture than it used to be like we would have been used to that in our time or maybe a good bit worse but it's what it, it's just just the way he is and you say develop them individual relationships he he would talk to me a lot uh behind the scenes and tell me bits and pieces that were going on with particular things and it was just i was just amazed i was learning so much from myself about his one-to-one -one handling of situations he would talk to any player about any topic at any time about anything they weren't happy with and address it. And it was just brilliant. And and even, you know, I was talking to Christy Todd this morning who looks after the faithful fields for us. And Christy has a very difficult job out there at times with, with bad weather and pitches closed. And he just said, from the day he came in until, until yesterday morning when he left the faithful fields, he said not one word. Just total professional. Whatever Christy said, whatever it was, the pitch is available for half an hour. It's not available. It is available. The gym, the saw, the, the the astro. He just took the instruction and worked away, and that was it. And there was no fuss and no big deal about the small things, or and it didn't waste his energy and that type of stuff. So, so as I say, look, uh, Paul, you know this as well as I do. Um, he he's just going to be a massive loss and massive pair of boots to fill, and it's just so sad that it's just hard to believe he's gone. It's uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's disbelief, really, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, and, and the thing that I can't stop thinking about is that you know, him telling me it was going to be his last job and I want to get it right, he said because there was a, there was there was other people looking for him, you know that there was other counties and other clubs looking for him. And you know, he was impressed by, by what we were trying to do. He was impressed by our ambition, he was impressed by our training facilities, he was impressed by our players, he was impressed by a lot of things, and he came on board. So it was a vote of confidence in us as well that he came with us. But it's so I just can't get in my head that it, it it was it was going to be his last job and he wanted to really do it well and leave no stone unturned like he always did. But he was I felt he was really determined that he was going to do seri a serious serious job and be very successful with Offaly. And um, as I say, he just wanted to get everything right. And as you say, he also said there he was only settling in, you know, and he yeah. made a massive massive pres massive um, uh, imprint on everything and everybody and and. Um, Look, it's, we're, we're going in to meet the players tonight uh, to have a chat and a cup of tea and, and the management team and uh, and we'll just have to take it from there. It's going to be a very, very tough week for everybody. It, it, it is indeed. I think in, if if the mark of of a person and their, and their measure is the impact that they have on the lives of others, then in in in, in Offaly as in elsewhere, um, Liam Kearns had a huge impact, albeit in, in much too short a period of time. And on that note, I like to join with you, Michael, in, in once again expressing sincere condolences to Liam's wife, Angela, to his daughters, Rachel and Laura, to his parents, to his wider family and to his many, many friends, to the players who played under him, the selectors who worked with him, the backroom teams that he was there with, and the wider people who knew him. And and you're exactly right, Michael. He he appeared to know everybody in, in Gaelic football and... um. Or what is there to say? Only Kovron, Okri, or of 